but uh, you know, I, I don't I don't think there's anything bad with with companies, um, uh, you know, thinking about the the long term vision for their companies rather than short term investor gains. Actually, I, th I think this two way split, which will end up with the infrastructure and energy businesses. You know, these are two businesses actually have quite a lot of synergy together. They also have a relatively high proportion of maintenance related income, um, and I, and I do think that you know that the this that what I, I suppose what one could call the the rump. Of, of Toshiba actually could generate some decent returns. Speaking of those returns in the future, what does this mean for Toshiba moving forward? Because it does appear that they're, you know, they're paying out a lot more in terms of capital allocation, they're ceding to the investors or the ag activist investors in that sense, like we just discussed. But it does seem to be that they're stripping down a lot of their profitable parts when it comes to their stake in their chip division. They're, they're hiving off these two units. So as an investor, what do you do now? Do you invest solely in the device businesses or do you consider it as a holistic play and keep your money in? Um, I would say that I would keep my money in because um, um, I, the, the returns, if you stick around, the returns potentially that you could be getting over, over a longer period of time are actually a lot greater than this latest plan. As I said, you know, they could be raising eight to $10 billion from Kyoxia, another two to $3 billion from the building systems, Toshiba Tech, you know, will will I suspect will also go with 1.4 billion. So I think you know the potential returns for shareholders, if you stick around, is is probably quite a lot greater. Tim, if this uh, breakup at Toshiba is successful, then it could be a blueprint, couldn't it? It could be a model for Japan Inc. and it could lead the way for other stodgy, clunkier companies to uh, restructure too. Rico is going through this. Who could be next? Yeah. Who's waiting in the wings? Could it be uh, the Japanese trading houses? Quite possibly. I mean, uh, I, uh, I, I think Toshiba is kind of a special case because it's proven that it's, its inability to manage such a wide range of businesses. And I think that's why it's forced into this situation. If you look at Hitachi, for example, it's, it's actually still got quite a wide range of businesses, but it does seem to be doing an awful lot, of, an awful lot better job of managing them. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.